Hi, my name's Luke, and um, that, what I was just playing, is like a little boogie-woogie thing, a little shuffle thing. <laughs> That's what I want to teach you today, okay? And before I get into teaching the, how to play it on the harmonica, I just want to talk about the rhythm of it, because this is not a straight eighth feel, it's a, what we would call a straight eighth note feel of one and two and three and four and, but it's swung, one and two and three and four and. Uh, what we would refer to as a shuffle feel, especially in the blues idiom, is usually referred to as a shuffle. Sometimes you'll hear it being referred to as swung eights. And the reason that I want to talk about uh, the time first is that the time, in my opinion, is the most important part of the music. And that's what we really want to key in. That's what's going to give our music conviction. That's what's going to um, help it really resonate with people on a deep level. And I think that um, the American music system fails to really, I think, pay adequate attention to rhythm, at least my experience with having taken private music instruction as a younger musician and coming up is that I'm, uh, I can't believe what my teachers let me get away with rhythmically. And so I always try to make it a point to really spend some time with my students working on developing good time, rhythmic vocabulary, rhythmic um, accuracy, um, uh, some of the fundamentals of syncopation. Um, so this is a, this, this, I'm going to take this opportunity to do a little bit of that. Uh, we've got here, I wrote out this beautiful chart here. We've got these quarter notes and court, in 4-4 four, four time, which is also called common time because it's most commonly used in contemporary repertoire in pop music and, and um, blues and um, jazz, well, at least pop and, and blues, most common is 4-4 four, four time, okay? So that means four beats in a, measure note, in a measure and the quarter note is going to get the beat. So we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it just repeats like that. Now, I don't have eighth notes written on here, but if I did, they would fall exactly halfway in between each one of these quarter notes. So that instead of being in a four in a measure, we would have eight in a measure. One and two and three and four and. And to count eighth notes, we count them exactly as I just did. We just add the word and between each quarter note. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Okay, to get the shuffle feel or the swung eighth feel, we're going to change it because it's going to be based on the eighth note triplet, basically. An eighth note triplet just means we are going to fit three notes in the space of one note, of one quarter note of one beat. Um, we are going to fit three notes uh, in the course of where we would have two eighth notes. Um, and so there's gonna be a total of 12 of them in a measure. And, and also uh, worth noting is that they are exactly 50% faster than the eighth notes because there would be eight eighth notes in a measure and we're gonna have 12 uh, in a measure uh, of eighth note triplets. A friend of mine told me the easiest way to count eighth note triplets are using the words one, uh, a for the second triplet, and li for the third triplet. Like one a li, two a li, three a li, four a li. Okay? So maybe you want to just try counting along with me like that. One a li, two a li, three a li, four a li, one a li, two a li, three a li, four a li. Okay, so if you were going to clap that, it would be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do in order to get the shuffle feel is we're simply going to omit these middle notes of each triplet. So you can see here I have an eighth note rest written in here. And oftentimes in notation, you'll see uh, swung eighth notes written this way. It's like a a triplet with a rest in the middle. So if we're singing, if, we're, if I'm clapping three uh, beats per pulse, so one a li, two a li, three a li, four a li, one a li, two a li, three, and now we'll just leave out the a, uh, li, two, li, three, li, four, li, one, li, two, li. Now we are playing the shuffle rhythm. Da, 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 da. So as opposed to straight eighths, which was da, 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 we have the second note in the swung eighth pushed out further, so it's falling closer to the next downbeat. 
one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, maybe you can back up the video. I know I'm going a little bit fast, but I wanna keep the video a reasonable length of time. So now that we kind of have an idea for that, uh, we let's go ahead and let me see, I can turn on this metronome. Uh, again, I mentioned this metronome in the last tutorial. One of the things that I like, it's called a, a Dr. Beat DB30. They run about $40. One of the reasons I like this metronome is you can hear different subdivisions. Here would be the eighth note triplet subdivision. Three a lee, four a lee, one a lee, two a lee, three a lee, four a lee. And it even has a swung eighth uh, somewhere. There it is. A three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So, um, and metronomes are great. They're, they're a good thing. Um, you'll think it's broken the first time you try to use one, but uh, they're great for helping to develop good time. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on right now. And that way we can play together. Actually, I'm gonna mute it here for just a second. So we are gonna start this on the two draw. Uh, in the last video, we talked about how the two draw and the three blow are the same. But what you're gonna find the longer that you get into playing cross harp is that oftentimes the two draw is, I, I think my experience over the years, the two draw is probably more common, commonly used because it's bendable, which I'll be talking about in the next video but you can hear the difference. Let me play a, a shuffle rhythm uh, on a three blow. And let me do it on a two draw. Can you hear how there's a little bit more pizzazz on the two? There's, because it's bending a little bit, it's like wah, 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 instead of ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it's ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. it's got like a little bit more humph to it. Okay, so we're gonna start that on the two draw. And then we're gonna go up to the four blow. And then we're gonna move one to the left on the three draw. Okay, that's it. Two draw, four blow, and three draw. It's just those three notes, okay? So we're gonna do it like this. Okay, now one more thing I want to notice. There's a lot of different ways that we can tongue things or we can do things behind the harmonica, okay? We've gotten to this, a we've talked about this a little bit just in terms of we want to be able to narrow the aperture of our mouth in order to isolate notes, okay? So what I'm doing, saying right now is I'm saying the, like the letter K, but I'm breathing in when I'm saying it, so I'm going <laughs> So I'm like saying ka ka ka, but I'm sucking in. And that gives it a little more pizzazz. So I'm gonna do it. Here's what it would sound like if I was just sucking without saying the letter K. But if I say the letter K, can you hear it's got a little, again, a little more humph to it, okay? So that's just on the two draw. I'm not saying K on the four blow or on the three draw. I'm just blowing and sucking there. But on that, on that uh, kind of chugga chugga thing, I'm saying the letter K. Okay, then what we can do, the next step we can do, which you're gonna hear this a lot in blues, is leave out the downbeat. So right now I'm playing one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave out, I'm gonna do one, a, uh, but I'm not gonna play the downbeat of two, or I'm not gonna play, and I'm not gonna play the downbeat of three, I'm just gonna be playing the uh, upbeats, like one, a, a, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a... Is that clear? So it'll sound like this. And uh, you've prob that probably sounds like something you've heard somewhere before, right? That's a pretty common sort of... Uh, comping method that harmonica players use. So that'll wrap up this tutorial. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna go into a little bit more about cross harp by exploring the song by the Beatles, Love Me Do, which is a great intro introduction to cross harp uh, without having to do any bending. Again, thank you so much for watching and, and please connect with me on Facebook or like this video if it's helpful to you or let me know if it's helpful to you. I really appreciate hearing from you so much, thanks. Thank <laughs> you.